So we started collecting uh, samples for the stem cell matrix in about 2004. And we, of course, just like everything else that turns out to be interesting, we had no funding for it. There's an interesting story behind getting funding for it. We managed to uh, start collecting uh, samples. We decided what we wanted to do for the stem cell matrix was to capture the whole sort of universe of stem cells and their derivatives. And rather than try to do that all in our own lab, uh, which I knew right away, no matter how large my lab was, was ever going to be, it wouldn't be large enough, we decided to use the resources of the stem cell community all over the world. And so we offered to analyze samples for people. And sometimes it took a little arm twisting and sometimes it took a little um, trying to get people to trust us um, so that, because they didn't know what gene expression analysis was. And so were they going to turn over their cells to us and who knows what we might say about them. But eventually we built up enough interest, enough trust, enough uh, capacity so that we could um, establish um, a database of gene expression information for several hundred um, embryonic stem cell lines. And then we started adding induced pluripotent stem cell lines. The whole idea was to get as much diversity as possible. So we got, we, um, at uh, international conferences, we would uh, talk with people about collaborating with us. Um, we had people from Finland and uh, Korea, Australia, um, all over the world um, who were willing to send us specimens of their cells grown in their labs for us to analyze and compare to our database. And then we would give, you know, essentially, they would get a publication out of it because we, their name would be on the paper if it worked. Um, and our first publication was in 2008. Um, it was a uh, publication using just a few hundred uh, cell lines, but we managed to uh, come up with a profile, a gene expression profile, that uh, discriminated uh, pluripotent stem cells from every other cell type that we could find. They're very, very distinct. And the second interesting part was they're very similar to each other. So the cells that I got, if I had two cell lines growing in my lab, and then I would get a couple of cell lines from a lab in Finland, um, you could tell, you couldn't tell whose cells were whose. I mean, there were subtle differences, but essentially if it was a pluripotent stem cell, we could tell you what the signature was, just on the basis of gene expression. So uh, as we, that was our basis, that was the first publication. And then uh, we later started adding more technology as we got, um, as it became available. We started out mostly with microarrays because they cost less than anything else. And so we saved these samples and we started doing all the different analyses on each sample. So each sample, this would be an, some embryonic stem cell line or some iPS cell line, we would have a gene expression profile, we would have a microRNA expression profile, a um, DNA methylation profile, um, and a SNP genotype profile, all in the same cells. So that means that we could tell whether um, how gene expression and DNA methylation interacted. I mean, like, is, if a gene is methylated, is it expressed or is it not expressed? And the answers were not nearly as simple as what people had said from model systems. And having so many cell lines, and we now have around 5,000 in the database, means that we can uh, figure out um, what, the, uh, what the variability is due to the random events that occur in cell culture. And we can, so we can find out which things are consistent and which things are noise. And mostly what it has done by looking at all these data from all of these cell lines is it has come up with a much simpler and simpler picture. Uh, we're not worried about the, little, the wiggle anymore. We figured out what the wiggle is. And so we are getting a very concrete view of what a pluripotent stem cell looks like and what happens when it differentiates on all those different levels. And the secret to it really has been having thousands of samples studied with with techniques that are that give you huge data sets, and um, I think one one thing that uh, we like to remind each other of is that we can't be afraid of data. Um, that um, analyzing huge data sets is uh, does not need to be scary. We have to be uh, we have to have the courage to be willing to take on um, these really huge projects and know that uh, we will make sense out of them.